Would you like to be a star in your art life? Yeah. Attracting business and buyers and collectors? Yeah. Perfect, because you're in the right place. Kelly Folsom is an award-winning artist, author, and transformational art coach. She's committed to helping women artists succeed in their life and in their business. When she's not working, she's dreaming of her next trip to Paris. Yeah. Please join me in welcoming artist, teacher, art star, Kelly Folsom. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, artists, for being here. I know that you are excited to begin to work on building your art business your way over the next three days together. But before we begin the work, I want to tell you a quick story about a starving artist, or at least one who couldn't pay her rent the next month. So in 2013, I was in my, oh, do I need this? Okay. Can I set that there? Okay. In 2013, I was sitting in my, shall we say, two-star, one-bedroom apartment. <laughs> <laughs> and I was looking around the room, seeing all of my beautiful paintings on my own walls, and it broke my heart. I saw paintings stacked up against the floor with nowhere to go and no audience for them. And I was angry. I was angry because I had done everything that they told me to do in order to be successful, and it hadn't worked. They told me to get an education. I did. I spent $100,000 to go get an education. Got my BFA. Well, that amounted to a hill of beans, apparently. They told me, <laughs> <laughs> they told me you got to get into shows. You got to get awards. Well, I had a whole wall of ribbons. And yet, I still could not pay my rent the next month. They told me you got to network with other artists. Did that. That didn't really amount to much of anything either, other than some good friends I'd made. They told me real artists get into galleries. If you get into galleries, you're a real artist, and they will sell your paintings for you. Well, I did that too. I was in 10 galleries across the country. I know, impressive, right? Pretty badass. <laughs> but here's the rub. The galleries weren't selling anything. Every month I would be checking in with them. Do we have a check on the way? Have you sold anything? Only to find out that no, no checks were on the way. And in fact, most of the time my art was in the closet and not on the walls. <laughs> I know things. <laughs> so I was feeling very defeated I also had believed them whenever they said, get so good that they can't ignore you, which seemed to imply that if they were ignoring me, that I wasn't good enough. And I was starting to believe that lie. I was starting to doubt my decision on becoming an artist and following my dream. I was starting to feel like I didn't have what it took. So I went to sleep that night, hoping that the next morning I would wake up with some sort of renewed sense of optimism. Got up the next morning, had my cup of coffee, walked out onto my shitty-ass balcony. You know the kind. <laughs> you know the kind with that ash road turf, that green ash road turf that's peeling up. <laughs> and I was wondering, what the hell am I doing here? This is not where I'm supposed to be. I love beauty. What, why am I here? Optimism did not return, and then I happened to look up, <laughs> right? Happened to look up, and I saw the sun coming up over the horizon. And in that moment, something shifted in me. I was in awe of the dancing light and the dancing colors in the sky, and I was filled with a really deep sense of gratitude. And I realized in that moment that the sunrise was a gift for everybody, it did not matter if you were the poorest person on earth or if you're the richest person on earth. Every single one of us get this beauty and this awe and this wonder every single day without fail. And I knew in that moment, I've got to paint this right now. 
right now. And I never painted a sunrise before, but I did. I had to do it. 30 minutes later, I had a little painting about the size of your hand. But more importantly than that, I was filled with a light and with wonder for the rest of the day. I was filled with hope and that optimism that I was hoping for. And I knew that I was healing my own broken creative spirit. And so I said to myself, this cannot be a one-time thing. I've got to do this for the next 30 days. I've got to heal myself. I've got to heal my creative heart because it's broken. So I did that for the next 30 days. And I set out to do it just for me, you know, just to do it for me. But then about a weekend, I was like, I want other people to enjoy these sunrises. I want other people to enjoy my work. But how? The problem was the galleries I was in at the time only wanted my still life work. They didn't want my landscapes. How can I find an audience for these sunrises? Facebook. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So I realized, oh, I'm on Facebook. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to start sharing these sunrises on Facebook. And the reason why is because what I've learned now is that every artist has to have an audience for their work. And if you don't have that, it breaks the natural creative cycle of giving and receiving. And it creates a, creati it creates a depression in that creator. So I started sharing these little sunrises every day on Facebook every single morning after I paint them, post them on Facebook. I was overwhelmed with the response. People loved them. In fact, if I didn't post my painting by 9 a.m., they would be contacting me saying, Kelly, where's your painting? Where's your sunrise? Did you not paint the sunrise this morning? And the lesson that I learned from that was that there was an audience for my work. Right? People did want my work. People did love my work. And I believe that they felt what I felt while I was painting that painting in that moment. And they were waiting for my sunrise painting that morning to light up their day. Mm. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> and <laughs> get this, I sold every single sunrise painting and more. Yeah, I did. All right. So from that point forward, I started to learn how to build my art business my way. Not the way they told me to, but my way. And I did have to learn how because they certainly didn't teach me how to do that in art school. So I started taking courses. I started studying with coaches. And I... I'm not supposed to be on this stage. I'm not supposed to be the one on this stage. I never wanted to be the one on this stage talking to you about this tonight. But I am the one that has been chosen to do this and to be the one to help you in your art life and to become more successful. There are three things that you're going to have to do if you want to have more success in your art business. Number one, you're going to have to rip off all that shame. You're going to have to rip off all that shame that everybody's putting on you that if you want to make money and do what you love, that somehow there's something wrong with you, somehow you're less pure. That's not true. So you're going to have to rip off the shame. Yes, do it. <laughs> Hell yeah. What was number two? <laughs> number two, number two. You're going to have to bust the starving artist myth. Stop romanticizing the starving artist. If I hear one more person talk to me about Van Gogh, I might throw up. Yeah. <laughs> and we have to do this not only for ourselves, but for future artists, for future generations, to show them that they can thrive, that they can be abundant. They're in. Let me tell you what, there's nothing romantic about being a starving artist. Okay. Oh, hell yeah. Y'all are such a good audience. Okay. Number three. You're going to have to believe that your art matters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you why I believe your art matters, and you can try it on and see if it fits for you. But at some point, you're going to have to believe that your art matters. The reason why I believe your art matters is because I believe as artists, we are here to express humanity to one another. We are here to uplift. We are here to inspire. We are here to 
uh, be a f creative force. And that creative force is what balances the scale of, scales of destruction in this world. Okay, so we feel any truth in that? Okay. <laughs> So you can, you, can, you can start with those. So that being said, I'm so excited to spend the next three days with you, and I have one call of action to you. Let's bust that starving artist myth together. Let's rewrite the story for artists. Let's change that paradigm together over the next three days. Are you in? Yeah.